Cervical cancer is the most common cancer in Kenya, in Africa. Breast cancer is the second most common cancer. But breast cancer kills more women than cervical cancer because we can pick up cervical cancer early through pap smear. For breast cancer, the key aspect is mammography. Digital mammography that we offer here at AKU is a lifesaver for every woman who above the age of 50 should have an annual mammogram. By mammography, we pick up lesions much earlier than the patient themselves will pick it up during their own examination. So that to me is a lifesaver. Human cells divide, multiply quickly, and when you grow, you multiply cells faster. At some point in the cell's life cycle, cells divide too rapidly, out of control. It is like making a photocopy very quickly on a photocopy machine. The machine will jam one way or the other, and you've got to go back and reset. When cancer cells have a mutation that gives them the advantage of growing very quickly, beyond the confines of the immune system surveillance. That's when cells become malignant. And the three things that malignant cells do, they grow, they invade, and they metastasize to other places. And that is what, why we say, if you detect cancer before it invades and metastasizes, the chances of being cured are much higher. So this is a digital mammogram machine. Uh, there are different kinds of mammogram equipment, so where you have a digital one and you also have one that uses a film technique. So with this particular mammogram machine, when a woman comes in, we'll have her breast positioned and we'll apply compression within the breast so that there's no movement and you get better image quality. Once the image is acquired, then there'll be immediate release of the compression and then we'll change the orientation in which we're taking the images. So the breast will change position. So we take two sets of images for each breast and in addition to the regular images, we take uh, additional images called tomosynthesis images. So this is a tube where the X-rays come from, and then they come, go through the breast, and the image is captured within this area. When it comes to the tomosynthesis images, the tube is going to move in an arc. So it's going to move 15 degrees this way and 15 degrees that way, and it's going to make cuts within the breast. Then using a certain mathematical formula, it reconstructs the images into one millimeter slices. So the regular mammogram would be one image from beginning to the end of the breast. And so there's a lot of overlap of the normal tissue and possibly there's a mask that can be masked within that area. When we do have the tomosynthesis, is now you end up with one millimeter cuts through the breast. And so that way you're able to separate the normal tissue from the abnormal finding and increases your chance of detecting cancer. So studies have been done uh, comparing just the regular mammogram with the tomosynthesis and it increases your cancer detection rates by up to 30%. Uh, the other thing when there has been overlap of tissues with a mass is you may end up calling normal tissue to be a mass or you may end up missing the mass and so this helps in detecting and also detecting cancers but also reducing the chances of you calling something that's normal a cancer which is what we call a false negative. Um, additionally, uh, when we do see something that's overlapping and we are concerned that it might be cancer, we'd have to call that patient to come back for additional imaging. But with tomosynthesis, what happens is you're able to split the normal from the abnormal and that way you reduce the uh, need for calling that patient back for additional imaging, which would also cause them a lot of anxiety, wondering what's going on that they have to come for additional imaging. an ultrasound machine which we use for additional imaging once we've had a patient do a screening mammogram and found um, finding that we need uh, further clarification on. So when we do a mammogram what you'll find is you may get a finding but from that finding you're not able to really tell whether it's normal tissue or there's a mass that's underlying it. Sometimes you see a mass but on mammography it's not possible to tell whether it's solid or it has fluid within it, what you call a cyst. And so with the ultrasound, you'll be able to clarify that uh, by assessing the internal characteristics of that mass. 
Additionally, the women, when you do a mammogram, they'll have dense parenchyma, and that dense parenchyma may mask uh, presence of a mass. So an ultrasound is additionally beneficial for such women to find anything that may not have been picked up on the mammogram. Now, for women age 40 onwards who do the screening mammogram, this is what you use for that additional imaging. So what if you had a woman who has a lump and she's below 40? So that is um, the kind of women who would need a diagnostic mammogram. And so a diagnostic mammogram is a patient who is symptomatic and you want to find out what's going on. So in addition to them having a mammogram, for those who are between the ages of 30 to 40, they'll also have an ultrasound to clear up that area where they have the symptoms on. There are women who sometimes will also want to have a checkup done, but they have not yet reached the age of 40 where they can have a screening mammogram, and they're also not high risk, but they would require um, early screening uh, with a regular mammogram or even some patients who need an MRI. So in such instances where you have a woman below 40 and would require a routine checkup, then you start with the ultrasound. Why do we do ultrasound below the age of 40? One thing is there's no radiation, unlike the mammogram. This is the same technology that's used for imaging pregnant women when you want to assess the babies. Um, and so it's very safe in that you don't have any radiation. And even with women who are younger and so more likely to have dense tissue, you're able to still make out the various tissues within it. It's not a replacement for a mammogram in that they complement one another. So a mammogram is very beneficial because it picks up the earlier stages of disease or the earlier signs of um, cancer, which is usually something called calcifications. So calcifications on a mammogram will look like little grains of salt within the image, but that would not be picked up on an ultrasound. And that's why we would prefer to do a mammogram because it will pick that and that's the earlier stage of disease. However, by the time a woman comes with a palpable finding or a lump, then in addition to the mammogram, we also use the ultrasound. The ultrasound is also beneficial because you're also able to assess the armpit uh, in greater detail compared to what you've already acquired on the, on the mammogram. So we have two arms. There are those women who would come for a screening test and we do a mammogram and by assessing that mammogram we may find an abnormality that we then image with ultrasound. After that they'll get a biopsy done that then um, the lab and the pathologist will evaluate and tell us that this is indeed breast cancer. To be honest, I think without the lab you cannot have any cancer treatment uh, because you need an accurate diagnosis to be able to treat. So the lab really is core um, to any cancer for any diagnosis, any tissue diagnosis. So we have different types of samples and different sizes of samples. Types meaning we could have a cytology sample. A cytology sample is like a pap smear. You must have heard about a pap smear for screening for cervical cancer. So that comes in. It's a slide. It gets stained and we can look at it. So in a two to three days, the report should be out. Then there are those cases which are more complex. For example, you have been to radiology. You've seen the kind of work that uh, Dr. Ndumia does. Uh, now she's taking core biopsies and could be core biopsies of breast cancers because that's her specialty. And for breast lumps. And it comes here and it looks like, okay, this is malignant. Um, so we may send out a preliminary report maybe in three days time, three working days. But then we have to do specialized testing on that particular sample to give additional information that will help the physician and the oncologist who's looking after the patient um, to manage the patient. We are the only lab, the only clinical lab in East and Central Africa, that is College of American Pathology accredited. So it's like one of the, the highest, in fact, for pathologists, that's, for anatomic pathology, that's the highest sort of accreditation, uh, international accreditation that you can, one can have. We at AKU have the triad of very good diagnostics, PET scans, MRI, CT scans, incredibly good pathology, probably better than any in East Africa. And then you put together those things with a good surgeon, a good oncologist, a good radiation therapist, I think that is what we will provide our patients 
And I think every patient should be comfortable coming to AKU to say and to know that we will give them the best of care. And that which we could not offer will be very honest to say, go here, go there, we'll make a phone call for you and get you the best treatment. My message to women would be there is hope even with the diagnosis of breast cancer. A lot of the time when we hear uh, a patient uh, or someone that we know has the diagnosis of breast cancer, the first thing you think is that that's the end of their journey. But um, it's very different now. We have advances in terms of screening where we detect cancer at a very early stage. And these are women who I've seen at times do not even require chemotherapy. The cancer is removed and it's curable and their survival or their outcomes is as good as other women within the population. So there is hope even with the diagnosis of breast cancer and I'd urge women to get screened. Don't wait for a lump, get that mammogram done.